in the picture. Okay, then. Thank you for joining. Um, yes. I want to welcome um, Dr. Perrion. Are you um, uh, Perricon, Are you sent, uh, starting your video? Yes. Let's see if we'll hit it now. Yeah. Is that working? Perfect. Yes. Okay. Uh, so thank you so much for joining me. I wanted to welcome you to this fire chat. Um, you are a very, very interesting individual. I would be uh, remiss of us not to take advantage of, of getting you to give us your viewpoints on, um, on especially in anti-aging, uh, as well as, you know, in general, about, um, about what you've been up to. Um, I'd love for you to give us a little bit of uh, an introduction about yourself, uh, and then my, uh, I will uh, have Carl introduce himself later. Okay, well, first of all, thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be with you today. Um, I have a, a rather unusual background in that uh, as an undergraduate, I was an English literature major, and uh, then went um, <clears throat> into the workplace um, with, well, actually I spent small time in the, um, in the US Army and then went into the workplace and started working for a nonprofit health organization, uh, which I very much enjoyed and uh, working with children and uh, did that for um, about five years and then moved into the um, uh, business sector uh, because I decided I wanted to go to medical school. So I didn't start medical school until I was 29, uh, which was rather unusual at those days. It was um, pretty much uh, people finishing their undergrad moved right into med school. And I really much enjoyed it. and. Um, I really uh, threw myself into it and uh, managed to um, accelerate my path in medical school. So I graduated in about two and a half years, uh, then went on and did a pediatrics residency uh, at uh, Yale University. And uh, from that, um, I went into um, dermatology. Um, I also managed to get myself a degree in, in nutrition uh, during that process. So it was a rather unusual background for anybody. Uh, but what really, um, uh, triggered me was in medical school, uh, looking under the microscope in a course called histopathology, where we had to see what diseases look like under a microscope. I saw a squamous cell cancer, and it was surrounded by evidence of inflammation. And for those of us who have not used a microscope, uh, they use staining, and uh, what it looks like is confetti around the tumor. Uh, and I talked to my professors, I said, is it possible that inflammation could be driving this process? And I think it was pretty much a knee-jerk reaction. The professor said, no, no, this is your immune system reacting, which seemed like a very strange thing to say to me because cancer bypasses the immune system. And so I took that with me. And then I, when I started uh, <clears throat> my pediatrics of residency, it was quite interesting. Uh, they were looking at children with an asthma and they started giving them vitamin C every day. And, uh, <clears throat> and the vitamin C decreased the reactive airway incidence by about 50%. And so it had to be working on an anti-inflammatory mechanism. So with these things that happened, whether it was medical school or my residency, it put me on the right path. And I thought it was quite interesting. Then starting dermatology, looking under the microscope at all disease processes, it's quite interesting. When I'm looking at young skin, there was no inflammation present. And yet aged skin uh, had inflammation, even though there was no pathology present. So at that time, I put together my inflammation aging disease theory and uh, work with that. And I started looking at antioxidants as natural anti-inflammatories. So started treating patients with topical um, uh, certain forms of vitamin C and others, and found that I uh, had a very good uh, clinical response and also started filing patents while I was still a, a resident in dermatology. Uh, when leaving that, I started my practice and uh, also under my, using nutrition, uh, I thought to myself, well, we know why there's inflammation in the skin because it's the interface between us and the environment, but what's driving inflammation in, in, in heart and in arteries and in, in brain, everything I looked at under the microscope. And I decided it has to be what we're doing many times a day, which is eating. So I came to the conclusion that there are foods that are pro-inflammatory, uh, foods that are neutral, and there are foods that are anti-inflammatory. And, and it was pretty simple because it came down to what our grandmother told us to eat, fresh fruits and vegetables and, and fish. Uh, and I call that the anti-inflammatory diet. What was really remarkable was when I put people on this diet in my practice, they got better faster. And, and so we can use Western medicine plus nutrition. And what I noticed was when someone ate an anti-inflammatory diet, they had this absolutely beautiful radiance that came to their skin within three days. And I thought this is really onto it because uh, the nice thing about practicing um, dermatology, 
uh, as you can see the results uh, of, of the work as opposed to say internal medicine and lowering, lowering someone's blood pressure, you don't see that happen. And so I took all of this and um, I was very intrigued with my patients and I thought I wanted to tell my colleagues about it. So I wrote a book and it was rather scientific and a book agent uh, met me at some conference I was speaking at. She said, um, Gia, you know, I'd like to see this book you're writing for your fellow physicians. And I gave it to her. I said, it's pretty boring, actually, for a non-scientist. And she thought it was great. And um, so we went ahead and we published that book. And uh, unfortunately, they changed the title from my scientific title uh, to something that I think trivialized the contents. They called it the wrinkle cure. But anyway, it caught on. And, um, and uh, we, we sold um, uh, about 2 million books and uh, just went all over the world in terms of our, our appearances to, to talk about how this works. So um, at the same time, I'd been filing for patents with topical anti-inflammatories. So it all came together and I was working in my practice and um, I went to all of the big corporations in the world who were, who were in skincare. So uh, Johnson & Johnson and Estee Lauder and, and L'Oreal and nobody was interested in the technology at all. So I had to make a decision, which I didn't want to make. Um, I said, I guess I have to start my own company. Wasn't interested in that, but I did. And it worked out really well. I mean, it, um, profits um, and also the growth was enormous and the feedback I got was very positive. So I just kept on working, but I had other interests as well. I was interested in um, physics uh, all of my life and uh, started looking at things. And, um, and then matter of fact, um, right after 9-11, uh, I was quite concerned about the vulnerability of our commercial flights. Uh, from so shoulder held rockets, which were available on the black market. So I fortunately had the resources and I started putting together my ideas of what I could do to, to prevent that and work with uh, Texas A&M Aerospace and patents were issued uh, for that. And uh, home, Homeland Security mandated Congress to pay for it. Unfortunately, um, as I was moving forward and the patents were issued, uh, the patent kind of disappeared. And I found out uh, finally through my Senator uh, that the technology was made um, under a secrecy order for national security reasons. But I kept on moving with that. And so I started another company besides the skincare company, and that's Paraquest Defense Research, and, and have a lot of technology in, in that. And then at the same time, uh, working with my skincare, I was interested in transdermal technology and, and developed something where I can deliver biologically active peptides without having to use a needle for injection. And, uh, and my latest venture is... Um, is hydrogen water because I believe that inflammation is behind aging and aging related diseases. And so I was always looking for what I call the magic bullet and came across hydrogen, which was in um, Japan at the time, was very skeptical uh, because hydrogen is a nonpolar molecule, it doesn't interact. Uh, went to Japan, talked to the scientists, came back and did my own studies. Totally convinced that this is the future for, for health in this country and every country in, in, in the world. And so I started my um, uh, Paracone Hydrogen Water Company about seven years ago as well. And I think in the future, we're going to see some really interesting things happening with this because when you drink hydrogen, it does a couple of things on a cellular level. It mimics fasting and it mimics exercise. And so it's kind of like a dream. Like how can I sit on my couch and, uh, and uh, do my workout? And that just means lifting the hydrogen water. So that's it. Well, you just sold me as a, as a client. I can tell you that. <laughs> Great. Yeah, so coming to um, coming to to the, I understand that you're you're in the works of a new book and you continue to publish. Uh, so the first book wasn't the end of it. Give us a little bit peek about the rest of the books. Uh, it's, it seems like you you've been published multiple times. Yes, um, there's a total of um, uh, twelve books, um, but eight were more for uh, consumption by the consumer, and um, uh, five of them uh, actually achieved number one status in the New York Times. And I was very happy with this because I was teaching people about nutrition. And nutrition is critical and uh, people want to look good and they want to feel good. So my, my skincare company actually taught people a three tiered program, which is the most important one is how you eat. It's beauty from the inside out. And then of course, um, if, you have, if you have the resources, you can also take supplements with anti-inflammatory activity. And finally, you can use topicals that have anti-inflammatory activity, but it has to be able to penetrate into the skin. That's where my transdermal uh, company came in. Uh, and so it, it, it worked out well because I, uh, wherever I go in the world, um, people will walk up to me and say, you know, you really changed my life. And so it wasn't about using a topical, just a topical product, but changing their diet and supplements and approaching this. And it's quite interesting. Um, 
when I talked about inflammation uh, back in um, uh, late 90s and in 2000, I was a, I was a um, assistant um, clinical professor at Yale teaching some dermatology and, and with my practice. And there was a lot of pushback uh, from the academics. And they thought this inflammation thing was totally absurd. And uh, there was a lot of pressure on me on that. And um, finally, about 2005 or 2006, it was uh, on the cover of Time Magazine. And then for some reason, even though academic papers don't move people, Time Magazine does. And so now it's mainstream, uh, but I feel very happy about things. And I'm very happy about still pursuing that magic bullet. I think hydrogen is the answer, by the way. And uh, I am really enjoying of what I do. I, um, I have a lot of patents in areas of medicine and aerospace and other areas. I think numbers about 150 to 175 patents too. So I just like doing, I like learning and I, I really want to do what I can to help everybody around me. That's a, that's an amazing thing. Um, you know, yes, I, I completely agree. Uh, speaking about inflammation a while back certainly would have been, uh, uh, you know, taboo almost in, in the medical communities. Uh, certainly an area that has recently uh, seen a lot more um, indication. But I mean, as a dermatologist, uh, I would assume that, you know, seeing uh, skin conditions such as eczema, psoriasis, and autoimmune in general, where their inflammation seems to be a, a primary focus, uh, you know, you, you would, you, would, uh, you know, uh, be able to, to convince people quite early into the process and say, look, this, this is... In and it's, uh, you know, it seems it is very much diet related and it is very much, uh, uh, you know, a problem. So I'm, I'm surprised that it took that long, but, I'm, but we're glad that you were able to push that through and that, that, that here we are. Um, tell us a little about where the journey takes you further. Well, in, in a few areas, it's very exciting. Um, in, the, um, in the defense research, I'm currently working on a new form of um, uh, thrust uh, that can be used will that will not produce any CO2, uh, and it's um, it's a totally new concept. Um, it does use hydrogen, uh, but we're not oxidizing hydrogen, which is totally different from anybody else. And uh, so that's sort of a big focus right now. Um, in the area of um, the transdermal, uh, we're really excited about some of the things we're doing there because we can now take biologically active peptides that could not be used because you can't take them orally; they get digested. And you can't really put them intravenously because enzymes break them down. So we have this whole armamentarium of biologically active peptides that we can now access. And so uh, we're looking at a lot of different disease processes and it looks like it's gonna be very, very positive. And, um, and then finally, uh, in, in the hydrogen water is, is most interesting to me. We did a study in India, uh, looking at patients who had something called the metabolic syndrome. And the metabolic syndrome is a, a classification uh, based on both clinical findings, uh, blood work, and then physical findings, and it's obesity and there's um, uh, high blood sugar and, and elevated insulin. And the metabolic syndrome is the precursor of virtually all Western diseases. So you move on to type 2 diabetes or type 1 diabetes, increased incidence of cancer, cognitive decline, heart disease, and go on forever here. And so in this study, uh, we put subjects um, on hydrogen water twice a day, um, didn't ask them to change their diet or anything. And we had a control group who was just getting plain water. And at the end of 24 weeks, the people actually taking the active hydrogen water uh, no longer could be categorized as having metabolic syndrome. So the implications of that are enormous in that it means that if we don't have metabolic syndrome, we're not gonna move on to all these Western diseases. And being conservative, if we put, uh, you say the United States of America uh, on hydrogen water, um, I believe that within two to three years, we could lower the healthcare cost by a trillion dollars. And that's very conservative. It's also interesting in that paper that was um, uh, published uh, on the uh, study of uh, metabolic syndrome in India, uh, that the chief scientist, for some reason, didn't feel it was important enough to say that the average weight loss was eight pounds without changing anything except drinking hydrogen water. But it's a very good paper. I think it establishes the fact that this is the future. Uh, the thing is, how do we get people interested? And of course... I've certainly marketed many things in my life, and I think uh, hydrogen water is quite interesting, but it doesn't seem to be getting uh, picked up. It's very subtle. When you drink it, you have a little bit of increase of energy, and you can't see on a cellular level that it's throwing those switches that are mimicking exercise or throwing those switches that are mimicking uh, fasting, which are all very positive for our health. So I do believe it's, it has to be for the future, uh, whether it would be government in, um, in, involved um, 
Uh, they can be, but I don't think they're paying attention right now. We have a lot of other problems in the world. Uh, so the future is interesting to me. It never seems to end. I want to complete this um, propulsion project uh, because it can be used um, in automobiles, um, uh, jets, um, rockets, whatever we're going to do. I mean, hydrogen water, I think, was really going to be preventive medicine, which, of course, is what I always wanted to accomplish. And then, of course, with my new book, I'm, I'm explaining this whole thing in a very different way because I've narrowed it down to one molecule in the body. Wow. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's mind-blowing, uh, you know, especially coming from uh, a published and, 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 and cited and, and, and so well researched and studied and, you know, author um, that uh, there, there, there could be simple solutions to such complex problems and the numbers that you talk about in reducing, uh, you know, and, and, and all of this is, is, is looking at prevention as preventative medicine, not so much as, as medicine itself. Um, you know, uh, combined with, with your nutrition side of it, uh, it seems like, uh, you know, uh, you are the Ponce de Leon that we've been looking for. So I'm looking forward to seeing more and more from you about this and, uh, and, and, and expecting that, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see more in, in the future about research in this area and, and for peer review and for, you know, for uh, vindication in, in, in your faith in this and, and uh, to bettering mankind. Um, you know, it's an interesting thing. And I, and I, and I asked Carl to get on um, simply because of the fact that uh, Carl Selig is uh, anything. He's the curator of Digital Davos, of course. Of course, he's a host, he's a, uh, he's a banker, he's a hedge fund manager, he has many, many different hats. And he's a medical doctor. Um, and at the same time, um, you know, he's co-authored a book. Um, and uh, the, the, the book is with, um, uh, with Edgar Sigerson. And, uh, and this book is a, is a very interesting book because, uh, you know, I read it and it was kind of a, you know, a book that, that starts with the double split experiment. Um, and so Carl, uh, you know, let me, let me have you jump in a little bit and talk a little bit about your book because I'd really love for the two of you to have a little conversation. Thank you very much, Anand. So, I mean, first, uh, I must uh, to say for um, Dr. Nichols, it was really delightful to hear you speak, and I'm impressed. What Edgar and uh, me, uh, we were meeting a lot of times, we were discussing a lot of uh, subjects, interdisciplinary subjects, from reaching from quantum physics, to consumer psychology, to self-help, also to yoga, and to basically how to improve yourself and find happiness. And we saw that it is quite difficult to explain for people sometimes facts which help, but there is no real scientific explanation behind it. Why should I meditate? What is really uh, to do with this? And then we see only some scientific facts which go only in a limited area, for example, psychology, but not like this. So we were looking at the whole construct and thought probably what, the, what is needed for a better self-help book is a model. In science, we know models are always used to predict future outcomes, to help us to understand something. I must make totally clear, we all know a model is a model. It's not the reality. When we go to the Bohr atom model and the electron spins around the nucleus, we know there are more complicated atom models which are more uh, describing the reality with wave functions and so on. But for certain aspects, the Bohr model is good enough and it's much easier to explain for persons to understand. So what we saw is we have to create a model for people to understand um, the way to think about improving their life, how they can reach happiness. 
And to start with, and to put it on a fundamental basis, this was the start of the book. And the scientific background from the double split experience we were using first as we based the model on, uh, on multiple uh, multidisciplinary aspects, reaching from quantum physics to consumer psychology to also other um, areas like self-improvement, yoga, mental health. So we thought it is necessary to lay a foundation which is based in physics and to basically show the people that everything changes. You have to start thinking with a model. So the book is called The Reality Dimensions. And it starts with a double split experience, which basically shows that the mere fact of observation can change the quantum uh, can change that electrons going through one slit or the other one to a wave, length, wave behavior. And if you observe that there is no wave behavior for people interesting, uh, interested in this, we know also that you can make a quantum delay. You can let one electron uh, travel farther. And as soon as you measure, you see that it's one wave. Uh, 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 it's not anymore wave. It behaves like a particle. If you measure, it behaves something else. The principle is, when you start the book with explaining such a fundamental difference from our perception, which we have today, it starts people to question their understanding. And this is necessary for creating a new model. And when you create a new model, you have to go and understand it. Everyone thinks that they know what an attitude is. Everyone thinks because it's used in the common language. But there's not many people which would uh, think that they know how to throw atom and tan molecule because this they never hear it. And they would say, okay, throw me one and show me how it is. So we started with the double split experiment in this book. The book helps people to find balance in life. The book helps to find people ways to look at problems in different ways, to understand the entanglements between their life and different actions which they did. And why, for example, meditation is necessary when you detangle yourself for a moment to get a more obvious view. It helps also to understand things, for example, why you have to go and put yourself in other people's shoes to understand it in a business discussion. If not, you speak parallel. And so we started to try to create an open framework, a thought experiment, which helps people to understand and think in another way to approach problems and to keep an open mind. This book was um, also then later on becoming very interesting um, uh, for different people in the investment community, which then also started to uh, look at this book. And it was also sown by many people which are on the Fortune 100 list. And they saw it just doesn't make just a sense to move one step up or one step down on the Fortune 100. At one time, you pursued something else than just money. You pursued other things of happiness. And basically, this is another philosophy of life, but it is a model, which is, it's not the reality, it's a model. Very interesting, Carl. Um, you know, uh, when we when we look at books such as this, and especially when you're when you're applying it to such a broad field, uh, such as even an investment model, or, or or just how people can can get reality and and, and their reality and see 
things at the same time, yet two different people see two very different things at the same time. So being able to see from another person's perspective certainly helps uh, the mental side. Uh, coming back to you, Dr. Parikhone, um, what I would ask you in this is, what is your thought process on getting adoption? Um, and that's why I thought this book was an interesting um, sedge way because it, it, it basically talks about how do you get people to change their behavior? Um, you, and, and the only real change happens when they break their own reality and then, and then move to the next reality uh, and, and accept new things. When you talk about hydrogen water, when you talk about basic nutrition, base, you know, people that are in, 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 a, in, a, in a wheel, uh, they just keep going round and round. It just never, never breaks. So how do you break the cycle? You know, that's a really good question. And what I found uh, just through experience as a physician and interviewing patients with issues, but also uh, in the beauty business, um, you know, actually creating uh, things that truly make a difference. And of course, with nutrition, people um, may be on the wheel and, and just doing the same thing over and over again. Uh, but many of, the, many of these people, I'd say most people, are not happy uh, with the results they're getting in any aspect of their lives. And that if we change things, and um, what I used was uh, vanity. Uh, if people, uh, my best patients are those with vanity because they want to get better. And the nice thing about the inflammation theory is that it's the final common pathway for everything, but you can actually see a difference, a profound difference in your skin within three days. In fact, a very quick story, I know we're limited time. Uh, when my book came out, I went on to Good Morning America and uh, Diane Sawyer said, you know, Dr. Perricone, uh, the, the uh, claims that you're saying in three days, you can possibly look 10 years younger. She said, it's I'm a journalist. I don't, I don't buy this. So we went on the air, which she chose three people from ABC. Uh, they went on the diet. They were sequestered. Three days later, we were on the air and uh, we were sitting in the, um, uh, in the makeup uh, trailer, but they did it outside in, in Bryant Park in New York. And she said, um, well, you know, I'm going to really kind of roast you on the air today. I said, well, let's have a look. Well, we walked out of the uh, trailer and she looked across the park and saw the three women and her, her mouth just opened. She said, I can't believe it. I can see a difference from here. So we went on the air. Um, and when they did before and afters, virtually, um, the book was number one. And you couldn't buy a piece of salmon in all the country for like two weeks. Uh, so if you can offer someone a way to uh, look better and feel better, and it's nice to have visuals because that makes a difference. But when you're on this program, you do feel absolutely great. And not just the way you look, it's also you elevate your um, uh, your good neurotransmitters, your immune system gets better. And so I think the, the short answer is, if I could make you feel better, because I, I've, I've, I don't think I've met anybody really in my practice or out there that's, that wouldn't like to improve uh, how they look or how they feel or what they'd like to accomplish. And so I'm not saying you're going to live to be 100 living this program, uh, but how about staying healthy and, and, and compressing morbidity to a very short time and rather spending all of our healthcare money in the last year of life? And people really understand that. So we all have a mission here. I don't care what you're doing. You have a mission on this planet. And to achieve that, you have to have a healthy mind and a healthy body. And we can do, we can do all of these. And people like uh, uh, Dr. Selig, he's approaching this in another way. And I really love the whole concept. I can't wait to read the book. Wonderful. Um, yeah, we look forward to it. Um, we're, we're running into the next panel. But uh, what I will say uh, to, to conclude this panel is, is that uh, you certainly have given me a lot of thought um, material here. Um, I, I hope that our viewers uh, around the world have, have gotten the same from you. And uh, we look forward for you to stay on for the next panel. So if you would please just stay on with us, uh, we will add additional panelists uh, for our final panel for, for Davos, for Digital Davos. Thank you so much. And, and I look forward to continuing our discussions.